Hello, this is Warhammer Workshop and here is Necromunda Modification Part 1. A quick note before we start, this will most likely merely be a Necromunda modification. It's certainly not an invention or rework, that isn't the correct word, and it's not even a reinvention. Yet this isn't just a series on making a Necromunda board, or the game itself, on the game itself that is. I am going to create my own skirmish game heavily built upon Necromunda Underhive, namely Sneak Attack um, Scenario 5 and a few others. I have three game types planned thus far. I will explain my thoughts, the processes and the changes as and when we come to them. These are the Necromunda modification products I have so far. A shattered dominion tile to act as the three dimensional board, two foot by two foot and a set of the Necromunda bulkhead doors. Here I have placed the doors onto the board to see just how many I have and how it would fare. The small doors are there as well. I will also have five more wall pieces um, next week from the Necromunda box set. The wall pieces being the so-called bulkhead doors, the large panels. All in all, this won't be enough to fill the entire board, but it will be enough for the game itself. Anyway, as you can see, I am using the bulkhead doors as walls. They are quite thin, but I will try my best to make them work in the near future. This is just the very beginning of the process. And on the other side, you can see some of the leftover parts from the forge, which may be useful as terrain or objectives. I also have some other pieces from the sector range and non-games workshop items as well. Right now, I'm really just collecting everything I have and doing some thinking and researching before I get Necromunda next week and then I can jump straight into the process. So with that in mind we come to the miniatures slash characters themselves. There are 20 miniatures, 10 for each team or gang or as the English say a house I believe. We say house, the Americans tend to use the word gang here. And these are the only models I will be using at least for now. But there are at least two other gang slash teams or houses um, to consider in the future. And I can only assume Games Workshop will bring out more houses before the year is out. You have the Eshers, an all-female fast attack team or house, and the Goliaths, an all-male slow and brutal house. The most notable difference as far as I'm concerned is the base size. The Goliaths are on 32mm bases and the Eshers are on 25mm bases. They are all Necromunda bases and come in the box set, but the fact is having different size bases makes little sense to me and my quote OCD won't be able to deal with it which brings us on to one of the early problems to solve at least for me um, what bases do I use and which size although smaller is better in terms of conserving space I'm going with the 32 millimeter without question for both teams therefore it's merely a matter of figuring out which base I want to use. As it happens you can buy a separate set of 32mm Necromunda bases thus meaning they are all on the same size bases and the exact same bases in terms of the theme. You can buy 10 bases for £4 for both 32mm and 25mm. The first picture on the screen shows the bases you get in the box set. You in fact get 15 25mm bases since 5 of them are for objectives and also 10 32mm bases for the Goliaths. As you can see, the bases are completely different in terms of size, which is unacceptable for me. The second picture is the set of 32mm bases for £4 that I just spoke about. The third picture is a set of the industrial bases, which match all the new sector terrain, such as the forge. You get 40 32mm bases, I believe, and only for £20, still considerably more than £4. And the final picture is a set of sector bases. You get 60 32mm bases, I believe, for the same £20. There are other options, but I'm going to choose one of these three options. You have to take into account not just the two teams, that being the miniatures themselves, but also where they are going to be played. I plan on making two boards, one being the shattered tile. Uh, it will be a wasteland with the lava pools being toxic. In this case, I think the sector bases make the most sense. However, I will be making an industrial sewer slash city board on a foam board I have, also two foot by two foot, in which case I think the original Necromunda bases make the most sense. I'm not sure if you can see, but the sector bases are in general half and half between wasteland, that being just the ground, and metal plating and such. I only have 20 miniatures to base, 
so I don't really need that many. So cost is also a factor. The sector bases seem like the best option, but are also the most expensive um, because you get a lot in the industrial set, even though the prices are the same. The sector is the worst deal, although the best actually for specifically what I'm doing. And of course, the cheapest option is just to buy the 32 millimeter Necromunda bases for four pound. It would be nice to have something different and with some ground on them instead of just metal such as with the scepter bases, but I think I may be forced to simply use the Necromunda bases. Um, either way, I have a few days to figure it out. Speaking of which, I should note that you should always leave yourself a few days or a week before getting to work on a project or buying the things you need, because you need the time to actually figure out just what you want. Anyway, moving on, we come to the colour schemes of the models. I need a theme, or two themes, rather. One for each house. They have to be steampunky or at least colourful and fit together nicely. I narrowed it down to a few film based themes such as Batman, Tim Burton in general and Fifth Element. I also have the Crow. Here is the final collection of reference photos for the colour scheme. We have Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory um, for the Tim Burton theme, Batman Forever, also Tron. Hellboy and Avatar. The crow is always great but too plain and Tron is essentially off the list as is Avatar. Although there are some other options such as generic steampunk or cyberpunk, Mad Max for example, Lost Boys and many others, I am really only left with Tim Burton, Batman, Fifth Element and Hellboy. Those four themes and I only need two, one for the Eshes or female punks and one for the Goliaths or male punks set in the dark underworld of the far future of course, actually high world of Necromunda. This is why time is useful, so you can plan and think and figure out everything you need, either in your head or on paper, or if you have enough time slash models you can test out all the colour schemes. I may test out the colour schemes digitally. Whilst Fifth Element is a great childhood film of mine and is futuristic and bright in terms of the colours and individuality, I just don't think it's good for this. Therefore, I think Tim Burton, Batman and Hellboy are the best options. Now I just need to remove one more and I have my two colour schemes. Simple yet not so simple because the hard part is here. If we move back to the picture of the gangs now or houses, I need to figure out which theme goes to which house. Now I have style, gender and size to take into account. The Eshes are small, female and Harley Quinn slash Eldar-esque. The Goliaths are big, male and Bane-like. This means I either need to make the female Batman characters fit the big, brutal male form of the Goliaths, or I need to omit them completely, just use the large male Batman characters. And regardless of which theme I choose and regardless of the house, I have this problem. So this is the hard part, finding the best theme for the houses, both individually and collectively. Tim Burton is the easy option for both houses, or at least one of them, and since Tim Burton did Batman, I think we can cheat here and choose Tim Burton along with some Batman and Hellboy. Now I need to figure out if the big brutal Bane-like males will be themed to Tim Burton and partly Batman, or if this will be for the Harley Quinn-like females, which naturally means Hellboy has to also either be for the males or the females. Again, I will put a pin in this and figure it out over the next few days. I will most likely test out both Hellboy and Tim Burton slash Batman themes on both the Eshes and the Goliaths and the truth will show itself as they say. Again I have not done much yet because this is really part zero. It's part documentary and part let's and how to. I am both doing this for myself but also for others to follow in terms of the process and methods rather than following me step by step. Although this may be a modification to the pre-existing skirmish game of Necromunda, nonetheless I will be creating my own houses, backstory, lore, board, game mechanics and rules. I will also be using the core Necromunda and of course the miniatures. And the final picture is my notebook. Here I have started to build the game. You have to figure out the rules, the scoring system, the mechanics, the card and dice systems and so forth. You need to figure out the movement, the randomization, the advantages and differences of the teams, the objectives and so on. Here you can see it's just on the victory system, winning mechanics. I left a question to myself, how does one win a game? Do you need to kill all the miniatures of the opposing team? Do you need to score a certain number of points? Do you need to collect markers? Do you need to reach objectives? This is an awfully important step in the process. By part two I will have Necromunda in hand. 
and I will have figured out everything I just covered in this video. If you just want to see the end result of this process, because well, you're not creating your own game like I am, then you may wish to wait until part 3 or such, and that may be out in the near future. Well that is all for this video, thank you for watching.